right, this video is for section 3.2, and we're talking about log functions today. So, starting with the log functions, we have f of x equals log base b of x, and that's the way we read it. Now, notice a few things. The first is that your x's have to be greater than zero. You cannot take the log of a negative number. Your b's also have to be greater than zero, but they can't be one. Now, just as a side note for you, if all I have is a log x and there's no base written there, then you can assume the base is 10. And this is a really common log, log x. So if there's no base written, you can assume it's base 10. Otherwise, there will be a base written. Now, the first and second objective deal with switching between exponentials and logarithms, so going back and forth between the two. I like to use what I call the log loop to help remember how to change it. Now, the first thing is if I have f of x equals log base b of x, the way the loop works is I can take the base, b, will be the base of the exponent. So we'll say b to the y equals the x, and you can see that's what's written there. b to the y equals the x, and that's the way it works. That's how we can switch between the two functions. So let's just look at an example of switching between the two. The first one is 2 equals log base 5 of x. I just want to switch this to exponential form. So the base of my exponential is a 5, and we'll say 5 squared equals x. 5 to the 2 equals x, and that's the way we switch the form. Try the next one. Hopefully you decided b to the 3 equals 64. b to the 3 equals 64. Now if we're going the other way around, the thing to remember is that the exponent is what we have equals and the base of the exponential becomes the base of the log. So we have 2 equals log base 12 of x. Now this is going to just take practice. This is just knowing where things go. The other one, 3 equals log base b of 8. Okay. Now, there were some times, maybe in other classes, you may have seen things like box equals log base star of smiley face. So we'd say star to the box equals smiley face. Again, it doesn't matter what numbers are there, it's all about the positioning. And so that's why I like to use that loop to help me switch back and forth. Okay, now we can use that to help us in our third objective, which is to actually evaluate these logs. I want to know, what does the log base 2 of 16 equal? Now, we can't use our calculator. Hopefully some of you already know your calculator only works in one base, and that would be base 10. So instead, let's just use our log loop. Really, we, we want to know what this equals, so we'll say equals x. And let's use the loop. 2 to the x equals 16. And now we just have to use some guess and check. 2 to what power equals 16? Hopefully, you decided that it's 2 to the 4th. So the log base 2 of 16 is 4. Let's try the next one. Log base 3 of 9. So we'll say equals x. We'll log loop it. We'll rewrite it as 3 to what power equals 9. And hopefully you decided that it's 2. We're going to use the third one as your free response question for today. Log base 25 of 5. So you're going to go ahead and answer this question. This answer will be put into the Google form today. Objective four are some basic properties, some things for you to know. The first is that the log base anything of one always equals zero. And the log base b to the b, so when the base is the same as what you're taking the log of, it always equals one. Let's look on the right at the examples, the first two. Log base seven of seven. Since the base and what you're taking the log of is the same, it equals one. You can think of this as being 7 to what power equals 7? Well, it's 7 to the 1, so that's why it works that way. 
log base 5 of 1, using our property, we know that equals 0. And again, you could think of this as 5 to the what equals 1. Well, 5 to the 0. The other two properties, log base b of b to the x just equals x. And b to the log base b of x also equals x. So in the examples here, log base 4 of 4 to the 5, that's just going to equal 5. And 6 to the log base 6 of 9 is just going to equal 9. Again, if you think about the log loop for the first one, it would be 4 to what equals 4 to the 5th? Well, you can see x is 5. Over here, if we rewrite it the other way, it would be log base 6 of what equals log base 6 of 9. And again, you can see x is 9. So that's why those properties work the way they work. Now on to our graphs. Graphing log functions. Now, the blue is the graph of y equals 2 to the x, the exponential. Our logarithm is our inverse exponential. So the graph in red is the graph of the log base 2 of x. Now, notice that instead of the exponential having the point 0, 1, the logarithm graph has the point 1, 0. And instead of having the point 1, 2, we have the point 2, 1. And our horizontal asymptote became a vertical asymptote. So the characteristics of our log graph is that there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. We're going to have the point 1, 0 instead of 0, 1. And then I'm going to go over the amount of the base and up those are the nice points of our log graph. Those are the points we'll be shifting as we make our transformations. So let's go ahead and graph a couple of these. Here's the first one. f of x equals log base 3 of x. So let's graph that log base 3 of x first. Now, the nice thing is, is this graph isn't being shifted any. So if we use our characteristics we just learned, we're going to have a vertical asymptote on the y-axis. We're going to have the point um, 1, 0. And we'll have the point B, 1, which B in this case is 3. So we'll go over 3 and up 1, and we can sketch in that log graph. So there's our log base 3 of x. Now, if we look at the next one, we've got a plus 4 directly next to the x. Hopefully you know that's going to move our graph left four units, and we're still in the same base. So now we're going to take this blue graph and move everything left four units. So move our asymptote to the left, and each of those points, and we can sketch in the graph. And now this is the same graph moved left four units as our y equals log base 3 of x graph. Let's look at the next one. The next one deals with log base 2. So now we're switching the base. Now for a minute, let's just talk about a regular base 2 graph. It's going to have that vertical asymptote on the y equal, um, on the y-axis. And it'll have the point 1, 0, and this time 2, 1 will be the two points we use. But this graph has a minus 1 in front of the whole thing. Now, this is the k. The reason we don't write it at the end is because we don't want it to get confused as if it's x minus 1. It's minus 1 to the whole function. So now we're going to move that whole function down one unit. Our vertical asymptote's not going to change. When you shift it down, it's going to stay in the same spot. 
we're going to move those other two points down one unit each. And there's our picture. And for the final one, the final one has a lot more happening. It's still that base 2 graph, but let's take a look. We have a minus 1 to the x, so that's moving at right 1. We have a negative, so that's flipping it over the x-axis. And then we have that 4, so it's getting shifted up 4. And remember for our order, we would do the horizontal first, then the reflecting, and finally the vertical. So that's the order we're going to do it in. So we're going to take all the points, including the asymptote, and do those things. The first thing is to move, we'll start with our asymptote, and we're going to move it right one unit. So now our vertical asymptote would be here at 1. But we have to flip it over the x-axis. Well, when you flip it over itself, it's over the x-axis, it's really going to stay where it is. And when you bump it up, it's going to stay where it is. So we can draw that asymptote, and it's not going to move. Now let's take each of those red points and move them right one. Flip them over the x-axis. That one's going to stay where it is because it's on the x-axis. And up four. Right one. Flip it over the x-axis. Notice now this graph is going to be decreasing, isn't it? And up four. And now we can draw in the graph. So the big thing to remember is the main characteristics of the log graphs. The points 1, 0, B1, and that vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So those main things. All right. Now the domain. Remember for log functions that we said you cannot take the log of a negative number. That means that in terms of this, the thing you're taking the log of, remember, the thing you're taking the log of has to be greater than zero because you cannot take the log of a negative number. So to find the domains, really, you have to take the thing you're taking the log of, in this case, it would be x plus 3, and say, when is that going to be greater than zero? In this case, it's when x is greater than negative 3. So you could say from negative 3 to infinity. That would be an example of the domain there. Same thing for the next one. The thing you're taking the log of has to be greater than 0. So in this case, x has to be greater than 5. So we'd say from 5 to infinity. And I'm sorry, these should be a parenthesis here, not a bracket. We don't want to include 5. And there will be your domain, and you could write it either way. So for domain, the possible x's, they have to be positive. The thing you're taking the log of has to be positive. Here's your multiple choice question for today. So pause your video and find the domain of this log. This will be the multiple choice question you'll put in today's Google form. In our final slide for today, the natural log, do you remember how we had e to the x? e was a special exponential. Instead of saying log base e, so instead of saying log base 2.71, we say ln. That means natural log. Whenever you see ln, just think of that as log base 2.71. And you have an ln button on your calculator. That ln button in your calculator is working in log base e. Now notice that for that, we follow all the same properties. So the ln of 1 equals 0. The ln of e equals 1. The ln of e to the x is just x, and e to the ln of x is also just x. Now, everything else you do with these is exactly the same as 
everything you do with the logarithms in the previous slides. Just know that if you see the word ln, the base we're talking about is 2.71. We'll do more examples with the e tomorrow in class, with the ln, I mean. This is where we're going to end for today.